welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's see who's in my green room tonight. We have got a rare and exclusive interview with probably the most famous supermodel in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen her on a talk show before. I don't think she's ever done one, certainly not in this country. The one and only Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> Looking stunning, of course. Thank you for joining us. Also on the show, uh, he's the number one choice for your thinking man's comedian. Well, when Stephen Fry isn't available, it is. <laughs> The always funny Mr. Dara O'Brien. Hey, Dara. <laughs> and as if that weren't enough, we have the star of one of my all time favourite television shows from Sex and the City, Kristen Davis. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My next guest is not only a movie star from films such as Boys in the Hood, Friday and 21 Jump Street, he's also a real-life rap legend. It's Ice Cube! Yeah. The Cube is in my house. Yeah, yeah, it's the Cube, right there. And we have music from one of the most talented and gifted songwriters of his generation. I adore his stuff. It is Mr. Rufus Wainwright. There he is. It's Rufus Wainwright. Yes, I say a genius. That's what I call him. Rufus, great to have you here. Thank you for being here. Okay, before we get to that, uh, fresh from the birth of his son, Simon Cowell has been out and about on the beaches of Miami. I'm sure you've seen some of these pictures. He's been out in Miami with his two adorable family favourites. They're called... <laughs> I'm not talking about his moves, I'm talking about the dogs. <laughs> the dogs are called Squiddly and Diddly. Because the moves are called Wiggly and Jiggly. <laughs> okay. Why, if you look like that, why would you walk around always topless? <laughs> I mean, seriously, he likes the bare chest to look so much, he uses it as evening wear. This is from the same set of photos. That's him out in the evening. <laughs> also, they're going out to dinner or something. Who wants to sit opposite that while you're eating dinner? <laughs> Did you order the chicken breast? No, but I'm staring at it right now. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a gift for your girlfriend, can I suggest something I saw on the internet this week, an actual product. It's a hand sanitizer cream, okay? No need to grab a pen, because I think you'll remember the name. Here it is. It's called Maybe You Touch Your Genitals. <laughs> That's what it's called. It is genius. That's not the best brand name for a product ever. Someone's coming in. Oh, maybe they touched it. Oh, there. <laughs> Um, a romantic 53-year-old man from South Carolina was left red-faced when he tried to pay for a romantic meal and get this true story, apparently. Tried to pay for a meal, a night out, took someone on a date, tried to pay for the meal with a fake banknote, one trillion dollars. <laughs> a trillion dollar note. Thought he was going to get away with it. I mean, it's hard enough to get rid of a Scottish tenor. Never mind a trillion dollar note. <laughs> uh, Christine, have you been, I mean, you've been on dates, obviously, over the years, but any memorably bad ones? Well, I am from South Carolina, and I did go on a date one time where someone said to me, well, that's not really in the South, is it? And I was like, this date is over. Wow. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that a firing offense? Is it was just strange. Like, look at a map. I mean, okay. you know? Fair point. Wow. <laughs> wow. A geography test in the middle of the date. Yeah. It? Weird. It's weird. You know, my dog, if you don't know how to find your way down South, you're no use to that lady. Like, you need a map, yeah. uh, you know? If you need a map, Dara... You ain't getting invited back. <laughs> uh, Cube, any bad dates for you? Surely not for you. Yeah, man. You know, one day uh, I was I was in high school and I went to go over this chick's house and uh, man, uh, as soon as she walked out the room, her grandmother looked at me and said, "Why don't you just get the hell out of here?" Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't like the look of you, or had you been on a date with the grandmother before and not? <laughs> I don't know. She was just one of those mean grandmothers, man. You know how they are. <laughs> yeah, mean grandmother. Okay, let's ask you, Rufus. Any first date terrible moments um, you can remember? Or God, I've been, I've been debating whether to tell this to anybody for uh, about 15 years now. So I figure, you know, on television, it's a good time. Let's do it. In front of the nation. Um, but I, uh, I went on a, a date many, many years ago, about 15 years ago. And uh, I, I guess I had a little too much to drink before... Uh, dinner arrived, and um, we were sitting there, and then I pooped in my pants. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 So, you know what? 
I think we have a winner, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah! Winner! <laughs> Worst first day um, ever, Rufus Wayne. Worst day. Worst day. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Let's get my first guest out. She's one of the original supermodels tonight. She's taking a rare television appearance. It's the one and only Claudia Schiffer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, Claudia, my, now let me just start. How tall are you? Because very few people, even in heels, have to bend down to kiss me. How tall are you in your without your, your heels on? I'm 181. Oh no! Can we have that in English? Five eleven. Five eleven. I don't do the European things yet. Right. I haven't learned them yet. Okay. Well, start. It's, it's great to have you here. You don't. Am I right in thinking you haven't done a talk show in this country before? No. And so why is that? Is that is there a reason for that? Or I mean, you've been asked. I'm sure. I know we've asked you loads of times. Yes, you have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, well, I just thought there's no reason to do a talk show unless, because uh, I'm kind of shy, so sort of hell for me tonight. And only you, of course, no, and no other talk shows. You say oh. you're shy as hell, but that, I think some of us would find that hard to, not to accept, but to understand, because I've seen you modelling, and you're out there, you, you do the catwalk, and that's in front of an audience. You have photographs, sometimes you're wearing, you know, not that much in the way of clothing, sometimes, as right. all models have to. So you're not shy in that way, but you are shy, what, no. talking, or...? I am just shy when there are lots of people. So um, I'm okay when we're just one on one, uh -huh. or maybe four people or six. But more than that, it's not really comfortable for me. It doesn't feel good. So I'm like, I'm a really, really shy person, and um, it does help wearing makeup and getting dressed up because I feel like I'll be, I'm someone else. So you're sort of hiding behind an image almost. Yeah, that's why modelling kind of worked. Yeah. I thought it was never going to work until I put the makeup on, and then you you couldn't tell that I was turning red all the time because wow. blushing all the time. I thought, hey, this works. But I you can were, just be sexy and uh, not be myself. How old were you when you were found as a model? You were still in your seventeen. Teens, right? Yeah, so 17, yeah, I was still in school. And wh so you were in school, but where did they? They didn't come into the school. Where did they see you? Where did they find you? No, I went. It was my first night out, and uh, I'm from a small town, and Dusseldorf was the next big town in Germany. So I went dancing with my friends, and then this French agent came up and said, uh, "Could you come to Paris?" And I thought, wow, really? Surely it's really dark here. The, they must not really see how I look like. <laughs> so no, surely the next one they're not going to call me. But they did. And then I thought, they must still be making a mistake. So when I went out of school for one day, I said to, to my teachers that I was sick and went for a day to Paris. And I thought, once they see the pictures, they're going to go, no, no, no. This is it. Send her back. So, but no. going to Paris, being a shy young woman, then going to Paris that first time, that must have been pretty intimidating as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. No, especially because I didn't understand a word of French or English. So I just thought, if I'm very nice to everyone, and I just say always yes, then maybe that works. Well, yes, it can get you into uh, trouble, of course, but I mean, it's, uh, yes. it makes friends. Yes. So you were in Paris, so people were just speaking to you in French, and they assumed you knew what they were saying. Exactly, yeah, especially the photographer said, you know, do this or that, or can you put this on? I was like, yeah, 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 we, 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 we. I had no idea what anyone was saying. <laughs> My agent was talking to me, you know, yeah, we, we, yeah. I'll do it, I'll do whatever you want, and I just didn't understand anything. So you speak German fluently, of course, I would hope. Yeah, uh, a, bit, a bit of German. And your English is very fluent as well. So when you came, when you moved to England, how did you find being a German in England? What did you miss about Germany? What did you enjoy about England? Well, if it's not football seasons and you see all the headlines about the Germans, it's not that time. Then yeah. I'm quite relaxed, and we, actually they're quite nice. Do you feel we haven't moved on enough? <laughs> Still. Not doing football season. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I can't read anything. Okay. And why? It just makes you crazy? You get mad? Or? No, I'm joking. No. Okay. I also have a sense of humour. Which... <laughs> But that's not always the case. But you see, these are the preconceptions we have about German people. Is that I know, I, but, do but I do have a sense of humour. I do, before you say anything else, I do shave my armpits, I shave my legs, and I do not wear socks and sandals. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's several of these I was actually going to ask you. These are, how, how German are you? Uh, but you're right. quite, you're an efficient person, I guess. That I am, yes. Okay. Do you like a sausage? That's another German question here. <laughs> Which sausage are you talking about? The big bratwurst. The one to eat? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, uh, do you... Uh, this is a question, which is... And yeah. this is the, probably the ultimate British stereotype idea of a German. Right. Have you ever got up early to reserve a sun lounger? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps with a towel. Right nope. 
No, OK, no. so... So we consider you a German, but some of my questions were a bit stupid. <laughs> yes, we uh, expected. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, how do you uh, how do you cope with being in the public eye as much as you are? Because I noticed a few years ago, it doesn't seem to be such now, um, but it used to be there were a lot of pictures in the newspapers of you on the school one on yeah. a regular basis, uh, yeah. and they were, and you always look stunning. I mean, we have some of the pictures here. Uh, you know, there were, and so they guess I guess you had paparazzi waiting outside most days. Yes. Every day. How do you deal with that kind of thing? Uh, you know, first of all, I, I knew that I had to sort of dress up a bit because all the other moms looked really pretty when they brought their kids <laughs> to school. Uh, I got it the same. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I didn't really mind it. I just thought you just pretend they're not there and just do your thing and don't really watch out for them. And then when I realized that my kids were sort of going, I'm famous! Um, I realized we're going to move to the countryside, which then we did. We moved to Suffolk. So you moved away to, so the children wouldn't grow up in that environment and so they wouldn't have a weird idea yes, who I they were. Yes, I think it's not about. great for them, no. Mm. I can cope with it. I don't, I don't really, not really bother by it one way or the other. Mm. But you're very pragmatic, aren't you? I guess that's a German thing as well. You seem very kind of like sorted about it. I am very realistic and very logical, yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you make lists? I do. <laughs> I make them at night before I go to bed. What is the, the nighttime list for? Things to do while you're asleep? What are, what are... <laughs> no, what, so for the next day, you make plans for the next day? Yes, I make plans for the next day so I don't have to think about it. Or wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, oh, yeah. I have to do this or that. And so last night, before you went to sleep, knowing you were doing this show today... Oh, my God. You know what I dreamt last night? I was on a date with you. Wow. <laughs> But what happened in this dream? Where did I take you on this date? Uh, was, was, I good, uh, you, was I a good day? That you were showing me your garden. Was I? Hold on. <laughs> not that garden. Oh, okay. No, no, the green garden. <laughs> <laughs> this has got very German. <laughs> no. uh, so, so uh, but did you make a list where you, because I know you were worried about coming on, at least concerned. You didn't, you know. I just prefer seeing you without an audience, that's okay. all. I don't you know. blame you, I don't blame you. Exactly, it's just, you know, mm. it's just you and I. Yeah, I make house calls. Um, <laughs> okay, let's talk, now here's the thing. You've just brought out a hair care range called Essence, is it Ultime? Essence Ultime. Uh, and so this is just like shampoo and conditioner and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there'll obviously be an advertising campaign, but yeah. part of the campaign is something you've come up with, this idea of a uh, flick, and you directed yes. these as yeah, well. Yeah, so my you? husband is doing a film, and I just actually took a few of his cameramen and cameras and stuff, and, so I, I, and then I called a few of my girlfriends, and I did this little short film called The Flick, where everyone flicks their hair from one side to the other. And this is something you're going to put online, and you want people to add to this, is that right? Yes, it's going to go probably YouTube, Twitter, and you can um, send your own video in where you flick your hair, and then um, the best ones will be put attached to the end, so it becomes a very, very long TV commercial. So it could be like the longest commercial in the history of commercials, when yes, you're correct, yeah. with all, uh, and so far you have, as you said, you used your friends, and these are uh, mainly mums, you know, and friends yeah. of yours, yeah. very beautiful bunch of people. I know, I'm very lucky, with. all my friends look great. Okay, I'm going to show you this, have a look at this, this is the Claudia Schiffer, The Flick. Okay. Some very, very beautiful people right there. I think we have some people in the green room tonight who are ideal candidates. Uh, let's go see. Yeah. Uh, who fancies uh, giving us a flick from the green room? Rufus. You've got, you got to love it. I got a, slight, got I got a slight flick. Okay, well, let's see, because yours is minor gel. That's flick. a bit of gel. Well, let's have a little minor flick from Rufus. Okay, I'll do, I'll do anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay, let's see Rufus in okay. slow motion. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> wow. 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 I don't know. Okay. Does anyone have the number for an exorcist? <laughs> Uh, Cube, your hair doesn't take more, so bounces more than flicks, I guess, doesn't it? Do it look like it flicked, man? Oh, uh, <laughs> flick. Cube, if you flick really hard, maybe we'll get a bit of a flick going, a bit of a bounce. You gonna get a flick, <laughs> all right? You do a flick. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, there's there's kind of an elephant in the room right yeah. there that we haven't addressed. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
I'll go. I'll, I'll do it. I'll okay. Do it. <laughs> Cube, look at this. This is someone joining in. Cube, okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got, Dale. Let's give us a go, okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Okay, let's have a look and see how that looks in slow motion. <laughs> wow, I think we have a winner once again. I think that's pretty good. You've got to put that on the end. That put one, that on the yes, end of your that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, there must have been, I would have thought, offers you've had for for money jobs over the years. What's the weirdest one you've had? What's the strangest job you've, you've been offered or asked to do? Uh, there's a load of weird ones, but the strangest one was from um, an Arab prince. Um, he, he asked if he could hire me for a dinner for a million pounds. Wow. And, presumably and he... I declined. Okay. So you declined. You weren't tempted even for a second? I was asked for some more details. I said, oh, can I come if I bring some security guards? Yes. Can they stand in front of my room at night? Yes. Could one of them maybe be a female security guard in my room? And then they were like, uh, no. Wow. You had a tunnel. And then they, 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 they sort of, then it went away. Okay. And I think they got the message. Wow. Claudia, thank you so much for coming on. Wasn't she wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> The fabulous Claudia Schiffer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Claudia. Still to come on the show, Dar O'Brien, Kristen Davis, Ice Cube, and music from Rufus Wainwright. So don't go away. <laughs>
you this, and I know you're not that person. And I know that you have wanted to have women on every episode Absolutely, whenever yeah, possible. Yeah. And, and in any show, on, on comedy shows, on science shows, hugely, we've made a big push on, on Science Club and Stargazing to get as many women involved in those things as well to show to, to, you know, that that is a, a fabulous career choice for women, for, for young girls to go into. It, it is anything that's actually important to me and feel very, important, very, very strongly about. Yeah. The problem with Mock the Week is Mock the Week is not like a lot of these other shows. It, they have to be stand-ups because we get them to do stand-up stuff that they have to be, actually be stand-up. And stand-up, unfortunately, for whatever reason, is 90, 10 male, female. Yeah. And that just doesn't tend to mean that it skews the talent pool from which you're drawing. Uh, Dar reason. is a brilliant man, not just a great comedian, but a brilliant man. You have a brilliant brain. You understand physics. You studied physics. You understand mathematics very much. And you're turning it to very good use. Uh, on Tuesday, back on uh, Dave, there's Dar Obrin School of Hard Sums. Yes, that's right. And you are to... someone who you do seem... Um, Pretty uh, devoted now to actually using the medium of television, not just to entertain, but also to educate at the same time. I mean, this is a... It's a kind of a weird take that, uh, that a lot of comics I, I know would use their showbiz career to get to meet models and hang out and have dinner with them. And I use it to meet scientists because I'm a real nerd. Uh, <laughs> and I quite like meeting people and talking to them and learning after. So, so tell us the premise because it's an oh, yeah, unusual you, idea. Yeah, you, you, there are, we set a problem and we get uh, comics in and like, I mean, you know, Sally Phillips and Pierre Sarfinovich and, uh, and various, you know, very luminaries of the comedy yeah. scene. And they go and they try to do it by, you know, trial and error, by rope, by hammering away at the problem, and then we show that there may be a more elegant way to do it. Like, and so that doesn't actually always happen, because I'm not actually that great, I'm a bit rusty at this stage, so often I don't get it very, very well. But it's, it is... It's one of the shows that, that it's, it has its own devoted following of people who really like this thing, <laughs> and, I've, and I feel no obligation to try to lure anyone else into it. You know what I mean? Because so basically, you're like, saying if this, if this isn't your cup of tea, you don't have to watch. Do you know what the cool thing about it? It's nice to have enough things that if you go, no, you don't actually have to watch. This, if you like this, you like this, grant. Uh, okay. okay, so Dar, I'm pleased yeah. you're here uh, for any number of reasons. I excited Dar having you on the show, but also because we did almost lose Dar. Comic Relief almost killed Dar O'Brien. And this wasn't, people weren't having a whip round and asking him to do this. <laughs> Accidentally, you yeah, almost yeah, died yeah. while in. Uh, we did one of those. We did one of those things, and, and actually, really, anytime you talk about it, uh, that's a lovely photograph, by the way. <laughs> that is, that is really, one of the most. That's a pretty good flattering images you could have chosen. Isn't that your new? That's your new publicity shot. Yeah. <laughs> we, we went on a, on this rafting, and it was just like a, 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 a essentially a sponsored bike ride to, you know, one of those kind of things. But and this was, was the not, Zambezi was, River, is that Down on the Zambezi for about five days of this. And that wasn't the thing that killed you. What happened was they sent us down these rapids, but it was at high water, so it was very, very fast, and they were just technically too difficult for us. And there's me and Philip Zadoya in one, and Jack D and, and Mel C in another one, both of whose boats ended up being caught by the rapids and being cr uh, swept into trees. There are trees growing on the side, and the trees grab you, and, he, and you're tr thrown, and the water doesn't stop. And we got swept into a tree. No cameras around, no other boats around, just me and Olympic triple jumper Philip Sadoyu, uh, <laughs> randomly, like the craziest crime-fighting duo you've ever met in your life. <laughs> Non-swimming uh, uh, Philip Sadoyu. He can't swim. Can't swim. Oh, my God. Can't swim. We had to go down the Zambezi without anything, and we just went down holding onto this inflatable thing. And then I got thrown out again. Oh I had to swim to a tree and then hold on to a tree for 40 minutes until one of the camera boats came around. Do you think this is going to, this might sound like a stupid question, uh, so in advance I apologise, but do you no, think it's... being Irish you were more at risk <laughs> being in an African river? <laughs> I mean is there something in that? I am, I'm, I'm trying to think of a way in which that is not a stupid question. Well, uh, I'm, <laughs> no, I, hang on. Is it that genetically the Irish would be well, because more uh, attractive to crocodiles? No, no uh, because you're from a small island race. Yes. A small island race. Uh, and probably don't see uh, hippopotami as often <laughs> as the British would. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I hadn't considered it. And you know what? That would, it was probably as well that I didn't go. Because I would have been in the water going, oh my God, this is dangerous. And then gone, oh my God, I'm also Irish. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and this is at a whole other level. Thank heaven that didn't occur to you. Well, I feel bad for raising that now. <laughs> uh, OK, you know, uh, uh, let me ask you about some Irish things here, because this is what I didn't realise, and we've met many times, I didn't realise you were a Gaelic speaker. Yes, I am. You speak Gaelic, and I believe your yeah. father uh, 
My father and I speak uh, Irish, as we call it, was, uh, to each other. And all he the only time. wants you to speak Irish to me. Is that correct? No, 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 it's, no? It, it was kind of a, a, a cultural choice. You know, the, the, the language in the 60s was in danger of, of faltering or dying out, and he was part of a whole movement of people who wanted to keep it going. And what so an incredible thing! What a wonderful thing! It's a cultural do. thing. That's all it is, and it's a good thing. I have but. some uh, Gaelic stuck Irish here. Yeah. Can I test something? You can tell me. I would. I would love you to to try it. Yes, I'd okay. love to hear some of it. Okay. It's a beautiful language. It's and a beautiful I, language. I think I'm sure you'll do justice. Okay. I mean, I've, got, I, I've never seen words quite like some of these before, so I'm, I'm, I'm sort of flying blind here. That's okay, I'm sure. Is it, uh, okay, no, go for it, go for it. Let's just... I'm going to do it blind so I can see... Uh, and do you do the same it. accent as an Irish accent? No, you can do it in any accent. You don't have to do it. Don't do your Irish accent, essentially. I'm sorry. <laughs> you will not aid comprehension, either in English or Irish, if you do that okay. diddly-eye nonsense that you always do. <laughs> <laughs> Ni chafien and chint. Okay, let's and pause there briefly. It is not Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reading what's in front of me. This is what's written down. Okay, so ni chan and No, I'm not. This is how it's. Ni chafien and chint and tedach. Ni kain on kint. On teidak. Teidak. On teidak is, is, is cloth. Uh, yes. Ni means no, the, something doesn't do something. So it's the bit I'm finding difficult. Ni. And I'm sure I speak Ni. to the entire Irish nation here. Is the bit where you went. Jin dang dong. I'm finding. Okay. Can I? A bit racist? Yeah. <laughs> Great, <laughs> sexist and racist in a week. Uh, uh, okay, that is that I was trying to say mm -hmm. talk, knee, talk, knee, kinds. Uh, well, can can, no, can, can I see it? And I'll. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, oh, yeah, Nihahan and Kainz and Tedach, which is, um, is you know, uh, the talk doesn't earn the clothes, you know, that, yeah. that it is, yeah. It's, Good. It's, yeah. One it's, for not, one. it's not a particularly well known Irish phrase. That, uh, <laughs> all right. I, I, in fact, I, I, even as an Irish I'm going, I'm not really sure what the point <laughs> of that is. Well, well, talk okay. doesn't wear, wear the clothes. Uh, <laughs> let's do one more, because I've got a feeling I've got a talent for this. Oh, I, th I, think, um, I think you're a natural, yeah. Kursheta <laughs> Ergawa. <laughs> Is gawa e go ni e? That's got the lilt. That's the, that's the <laughs> Irish lilt. It wasn't the e e. It's a slightly Mexican. Uh huh, uh, honey. Yeah. It's a bit. Yeah, because e means sister. Yeah. You shall e gawa e kick a gawa e con me. Boom. I don't know. Boom. May I? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kershida er gair er gair achis gair agonie, right? Like, like I said, like exactly. I said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is put, sil put silk in a, uh, on a goat and it's still a goat. Put silk on a goat, it's still a goat. It's a wonderful phrase. That's an phrase. excellent phrase. You that actually makes a lot of sense. You can't it tart does. up a goat. You can't, you know? Even if you're alone in the middle of Ireland. Yes. <laughs> that actually Don't even think about it. That makes it seem like a much more... Yeah. Well, I dressed up the goat, but it's still a goat. Uh, <laughs> OK, um, Darl, great to have you on. I'm, I'm filled you well. I'm filled the shows back, and thanks for coming on and clearing up that other issue. It's the fabulous Mr. Dar O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. Great, as always. Thanks, Still to come after the break of Christine Davis, Ice Cube, and Rufus Wainwright performing live. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out here. She starred in one of the most iconic TV series of all time, Sex and the City, and she's about to headline on stage here in the UK in Fatal Attraction in the West End. It is the lovely Kristen Davis. Kristen, lovely to have you here. Oh, thank you. It's nice to be here. You know, uh, first of all, I should say congratulations. I think you just had your birthday this week, is that I right? I did. Yes, I did. Okay, can we say what birthday was? was sure, it a... I was 49. I'm 49. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. There is absolutely no way anyone would think you were 49. 
Well, thank you. I mean, I think age is just a number, and people get all stressed out, and our culture is very focused on it, and it's kind of strange. So. Yes, it is. Uh, that's why I'll have to stop asking people how old they are on the show. <laughs> uh, do you, did you have a big birthday, though? Do you, do, you, do you push the boat at your birthday? Do you like celebrating birthdays? No, I'm not really that into birthdays myself, but I have a two-and-a-half-year-old, and she's very into it. And she doesn't have a good separation on whose birthday it is. She just knows it is a birthday, so it probably is hers. Yeah. That's her general <laughs> feeling. So she was very into it. So my parents came to London, they love London, and we had fun, and it, for her, it was her birthday. Again. So you were here, you must have been here for the, the Winter Olympics, were you watching that? Were you keeping we it did, we watched it, my daughter, oh my goodness, she is into it. Uh, it was pretty entertaining, I have to say, I've never watched the Olympics here, and it's very different than watching it in America. How is it different? Well, the commentators are, are, are very opinionated and, like, yeah, interesting, old. and um, that curling business. Yeah. I mean, they don't really show that so much in America. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, but <laughs> but here, I mean, did you find yourself getting it? Because if you explain curling to someone, it seems like, uh, who would watch that? But no, you no. can find yourself totally... Oh, we, we did. My mother and I got into it, but we did not understand it at all. Yeah. We could not understand it to save our lives, but the drama involved in those girls and those brooms, and they all had <laughs> that mascara on and then they would cry and we'd be like oh god please don't let them cry again please don't let them cry again let the thing go whatever i don't know what's happening but we were laughing so hard because the drama that they would infuse the rock with or whatever it is i don't know what it is but i mean there was some high drama okay before we talk about fatal attraction yes. we have to talk about sex in the city don't we we have to talk about sex in the city uh, okay. A huge part of your life. I mean, a huge part I, of your absolutely. life. Absolutely. I'm very proud of it. I love it. And you were the character everyone wanted to be. Everyone wanted to be Charlotte. Thank you, everyone John. Everyone wanted to be Charlotte. There's no two <laughs> ways about that. Uh, you, you stay in touch with the girls? You're still speaking? You're still yeah, in regular oh, contact? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. We, we text, we call, we try to see each other when we're in the same city. Sometimes we tweet. Oh, Kim yeah. and I really were the only tweeting ones, really. But. Okay. Uh, and, and there's the talk I've read of a possible third movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any concrete news, but is that a genuine possibility or is that just the kind of talk because fans want it to happen? Well, I don't think you can separate the two. I mean, if the fans weren't interested, I don't think it would ever happen. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of a struggle to get both the first movie and the second movie made, partly because, you know, we're a franchise run starring four women over 40, and that just frankly doesn't happen. Yeah. So it's only from our fan support that anything ever happened, ever, in the film region. And I think the third, you know, if it does happen, it's because people still talk about us, They're, we're still in the air, yeah. there is the fan support, and so it means a lot to us. What I liked about the movies was you joined them, they were kind of bigger bumps in the narrative of all these women's mm. lives than, than you would see in the series, because, of course, mm -hmm. it was more of an event. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we've seen them move on. Yeah. Where would Charlotte be, though, do you think, in her life? Bear, bear in mind, you've followed her, you've, you, know, mm -hmm. you are her to us. Yes, so where yes. Would she be? I am her to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, who do you think should play Charlotte? I'm like, well, uh, me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure me. Um, I would think, you know, I hope she's still married to Harry and happy and those yeah. children are growing up. I mean, that's not the most dramatic story, I guess, in the world. But, you know, it would be so sad for me if, if something bad happened. I, I, you know, I do feel I have that kind of, you know, you do something for 15 years or however long it's been. It's a long time. It's hard to separate yourself. So I don't want anything bad to happen. Uh, well, let's talk about Fatal Attraction then, because Fatal Attraction is coming to the West End. It opens at the Theatre Royal Haymarket on the 11th of March. Now, I don't know how many people here remember the movie Fatal Attraction. Do we have a lot of Fatal Attraction fans here? Yeah. If you've seen it, you'll remember it. A lot of the younger generation might not have right. seen it, because mm -hmm. it's 87, which seems impossible to me that it's I agree, yeah, coming up crazy. for 30 years ago. Is that crazy? Uh, oh, so look at the, them! Look at the hair! Oh that's my the original God. cast. They're really working the 80s look there. Wow! It's Michael Douglas in the middle there. I think that's Michael Jackson on the right, and it's <laughs> Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister on the left. I think <laughs> that's uh, that's Glenn Close, of course, who was fabulous. And who's right. the other actress's name? Anne Archer. Anne Archer. That's my name? part. But you're playing Anne. So you're playing yes. the wife. Right. Uh, he is playing the man. Right. And then you have the, the bad lady. But is she a bad lady? <laughs> well, you know, that would be Natasha McElhone. Yeah, who's playing... terrific. Yes, yeah, she's amazing. But... We should explain. How would we sum up the plot without spoiling it for people? Oh, it's hard. I was trying to think of that before I came out. Okay, so we're happily married, theoretically happily married, and he has a weekend fling, and then the woman... Um, can't let him go and becomes kind of a stalker and basically ruins our lives. And, and this was the movie in which, you know, we have the phrase now, bunny boiler. Yes. This was the movie which created that... It is. ...that moment, of course. Yes. The, the, a, a bunny does indeed it's get terrible. boiled. terrible, yes. Uh, oh! And I don't know whether that was in the original screenplay or the ad-lib, but is that in the, 
in the play as well. Hmm. Now, I don't think I can tell you everything exactly about how we're going to do the play. Oh, there's my pitter, picture from Twitter. That's funny. Oh, is that you with a bunny? <laughs> That's me with the well, bunny yesterday. We can, we can now guess there may well be bunnies there in the play. There are bunnies. Well, okay. this is a remarkable there coincidence. <laughs> There are bunnies in the play. That was yesterday. That was the first day. They're baby bunnies. Oh. And oh my God. Oh my God. I love But they're them the so most much. delicious. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That's what my co star Mark said, too. Um, so there I've are never bunnies. eaten a bunny. I've never there eaten a bunny. There are bunnies. But um, I, uh, I mean, let's say this. The main. Things that happen happen because I think we don't want to disappoint people that would come to see the play yeah. based on what they think of the movie. But they happen in a slightly different way, and there are some things that are a little bit different. But there are bunnies. <laughs> uh, now, are they going to set the film? Of course, it's set in America. I think it happens in New York and just outside of New York. Are they setting the play in America? Yes. Well? But you're the only actual American in the cast. That's right. So, do, are you the police person to make sure the accents don't go too too astray? Pretty much. I mean, we have some vocal coaches, but when we first started, I was just like, "What are they doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out they were all doing this like New York. Like they'd say New York. New York. And I'd be like, hmm, I wonder if anyone's going to ask my opinion. And then once we started discussing it, they were all like, would I do this or would I say this or would I do this or is this line right? And then I was like, oh God, now I feel like I'm, like I have all the pressure on me. Like I'm, <laughs> like, like I have to represent all of America, you know? <laughs> so sometimes I feel bad, like, like we got into this terrible argument one day about whether men, in a, straight men in America would say about a woman, I fancy her. Which apparently you would say in English. I think that would be an English phrase. You would say, yeah, I fancy her. Right. See, not so much in America. They wouldn't say I fancy no, her? No, What would they say? <laughs> See, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty sure not. I'm well, pretty sure well, not. Well, let me ask Mr. Cube. Cube, what would you say? You see a, a desirable young woman. Oh, I'm feeling her, man. I'm look, yeah, yeah, yeah. She no, no, good. but before you feel her, what do you say <laughs> to get permission? I don't say I fancy her. See? Well, you wouldn't say, I fancy. Well, you wouldn't say like that. <laughs> uh, Christy, lovely to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming Thank back. You on. For Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Kristen Davis. <laughs> After the break, we've got Ice Cube out here. Music from the fabulous Rufus Wainwright, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest on now. He is a rap legend. He's also now a Hollywood superstar. Please welcome Ice Cube. <laughs> Great to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Yay, yay. Yeah. For you. Much love, much love. Uh, what is, I've been calling you, I called you Cube earlier. Cube is what you prefer? You're, Cube uh, is what, what I prefer, you know. Uh, and this is a, you know, white guys always ask me what to call me. You well, know, because they we say, want to get it white. Yeah, you know, they say, do I call you Ice? Do Mr. I call Cube? you Cube? Do I call you Mr. Cube? Do I, I call you Mr. Beat. Ice? Yeah. You know what I mean? Cube is, is what all my homies call me. You my homie. Mm. Ice, you know, call me Cube, well, baby. Let that go on the record. Um, <laughs> What do they call you at home, though? What do your family call you? Which part of my family? You know what I mean? You know, my mom, she gonna call me O'Shea. Okay, because that's, cause that's the name. name she gave you. Yeah, that's my name. That's the name she gave me. She gave me an Irish last name. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Cube's in a new big comedy movie. It's out here in the UK right now. It's just opened. It's called Ride Along. Number one movie in the USA, this was. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Three weeks in a row. Yeah, wow, that's yeah, a great yeah. feeling, isn't it? Big time. Uh, so this is a funny film, a deliberately funny film. It's a comedy. Tell us the premise of this, uh, what Ride Along is about. Well, I play, you know, a badass cop, you know what I mean, who's... I'm trying to take down the biggest kingpin in Atlanta, so I'm focused. And I got this little mosquito buzzing around my head by the name of Kevin Hart. <laughs> and uh, he's a wannabe cop. He's, he's, he's school security who wants to be a cop, but what's worse, he wants to marry my sister. <laughs> So I can't have that, you know what I mean? Because he's a, he's a little challenge when it comes to height. And, you know, I don't want no little bitty uh, nephews, you know what I mean? So I, <laughs> I decide to take him on a ride along and just try to scare the shit out of him. So this reminded me, uh, in the, that wasn't a funny film, there's the film Training Day, the great film with Denzel Washington in. And it's kind of like this, but... Yeah, this ain't it. This is, <laughs> this is Training Day 
flipped upside down yeah. and uh, probably training day on crack. Okay. That's it. it. <laughs> it's just over this weekend. It's very funny. Have a look at this. What's that little clown that's dating my sister? Little man smurf. Maybe he just wants into the fam. I know exactly what he wants. You want the hammer? I want the hammer. You go get the hammer. Okay, enough of that nasty. <laughs> James, I wanted your blessing in asking your sister to marry me. Show me that you're worthy of her. How am I supposed to do that? I'm going to take you on a ride along. <laughs> Today is your training day. Have you ever even held a gun before? Bang, bang. Come on, the shotgun specialist. Be careful, that's got magnum loads in it. You can't get out of here! My stomach and my ass. Oh, yeah, you ready for the streets. Relax! <laughs> five seconds for throwing back. This ain't no damn video game. It's probably still drivable, though, because it happened in the back. You can't drive it now. <laughs> That's right along that cube with Kevin Hart right there. Um, so, uh, partly your character doesn't like him coming in because he's marrying your sister in the film or wants to. Yes, yes, yes. Can't have that. Okay, and you are you're a father in real life, Cube. Yes, I am. How old is your... Is Karima your daughter? How old is she now? She's 20 now. Okay, she's 20 now, so... Yeah, yeah, She's 20. bringing young fellas back, I guess, now, to see to meet Dad? <laughs> One or two. One mm -hmm. or two. And, and do they meet the friendly, welcoming Cube, or do they meet a slightly more judging Cube when they come in the house? What you think, Jonathan? Huh? <laughs> I got to put him through the ringer, man. You know, I got a motto. My motto is, whatever you do to her, I'm going to do to you. So, <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, um, that's quite a promise. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, that keeps him. But you do the, you do the, the sort of, uh, the, the mean face uh, pretty well. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Well, That's just my face. But, you know, <laughs> when you're doing that, you're looking at the guy. Oh, mm, you do I don't know how to do it, but... You just got to feel gangster when you do it. You know what I mean? Feel gangster and give it to him. Wait, man, this is my... Is this my camera? Come camera. on, baby. Give me the red light. There we go. Okay. Give it to him. That's how you do it. So, because uh, I, I like to think I'm original, G. Yeah, you are original. Look hard, man. Just look hard. <laughs> look hard. Yeah. Not quite. Yeah, work. <laughs> we're sharing a cell. <laughs> uh, no, we not. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, let's talk about you moving into acting. So your first big acting role, I guess the big break for you would be Boys in the Hood. Yeah, it was Boys in the Hood. Uh, had you acted before? Had you studied acting? Never. It took two years to really convince me that I could do it. I just figured I never went to school for acting. I wasn't qualified. You should get somebody. Get Todd Bridges. Get somebody that's qualified. You know what I mean? So, uh, dude was like, no, you the one. And I'm glad he pursued me. I'm glad I did it. And, and this is an interesting, I think, an interesting event. Really. You know, really, you're probably better known to a whole generation of people out there now as a movie star, as an actor. Yeah, that's crazy. Than from your, the music. And that would, I guess that was an unexpected turn of events, was it? It was. You know, I, when I first started, I just wanted to be... You know, my, I had high ambitions. I wanted to be the best rapper in the world. You know what I mean? I can't sing a lick, so rapping was the only way I was going to be able to be up here, you know, sitting up here with you. You know what I mean? So uh, I just, uh, just put my all into it. I met Dr. Dre when I was 14, you know, and he's, you know, he, he, he was a local at the time. You know, nobody knew, knew who Dre was. And, uh, and we just started working together and uh, kicked it off and ended up starting N.W.A. together. And... Uh, here we are. Uh, so NWA were a huge band, a huge yeah. band, and a controversial band, of course, as well. Definitely, yeah. You had your fair share. Did you call that controversy, or were you surprised when that happened? No, no, we, we knew it was going to happen. You know, uh, coming from South Central Los Angeles, Compton, Watts, you know, it's rough neighborhoods, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, back then we only felt we had a few outlets, and uh, the music was our, it was our way to be constructive and not being and not being destructive but it, it also was a weapon it was like it was our weapon against police brutality it was our weapon against crack cocaine it was our weapon against gang banging and you know it was it was something that we used to to speak our feelings because we we felt powerless at that time and uh, the music gave us power how were the police with you guys because you were fairly vocal uh, at times uh, they, it, they hated us yeah yeah they hated us uh, we was on stage one time in Detroit in 89, and 
we, we had a song called Fuck the Police. You know, that was the song. Oh, so the police didn't like that song? No, they didn't. For some reason. I thought it was such a catchy number. But, you know, they didn't like the song. And uh, the promoter that we were, we were doing the shows for said, yo, we'll put you on tour, but you can't perform that song. Cops everywhere. They ready to shut you down. So we, we agreed to that until we got mad at the promoter. We was like, tonight, we're going to do that song. We're going we gonna to tear this thing up. So we got on stage, and we, we started performing the song, and we was like, yeah, the audience was looking a little rowdy, and it was kind of getting out of hand, and we was like, what's going on? And then we saw the whole Detroit Police Department rush the stage. They threw... Uh, fireworks and stuff on stage they made us we, we took off running some of the guys ran out the arena to the hotel they corralled us arrested us all and all they wanted was damn autographs <laughs> <laughs> for their daughters and their sons and, uh, oh, man you guys mess up a whole show for that <laughs> Is it true there's a movie or there's a possibility of a movie based on the story of NWA itself, of you getting the band together and you being there way back when? Yeah, yeah, we're putting a movie together uh, called Straight Outta Compton. And, uh, you know, it's a feature film about, about the world's most dangerous group, you know, about NWA. And, uh, you know, I've been, it's like, this is a, a dream project for me. This is something I never thought I was going get, to get done. And, you know, Easy died of AIDS in 1995. So when he died, I, I never thought we was going to be able to make this movie. And uh, here we are. We're about to make it. You're, you know, you're obviously you're a movie star now, but you can't, you couldn't play yourself back then. No, no, no. You know, the Jerry Curl won't, won't no. fit on me now. So <laughs> we're going we gonna to uh, we'll get some reputable actors. And, uh, you know, I got, I got one role in mind that, uh, that I hope that, that my son land. You know, I hope he plays me in the movie, you know, so I think he could do it, uh, you know, so we'll see. He's a good-looking young man. Do you think he's as good-looking as you are, or do you think he's better-looking? Not looking? quite, not quite, you know, man, you know, he, <laughs> you know you, he, they broke the mold, but, you know, he, he's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a fair second. Uh, and will he be comfortable with growing the Jerry Curl for the movie, do you think? He better be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> and if it was good enough for Dad... Hey, it's good enough. For, hey, it's the reason he's here. If I didn't have that Jerry curl, his mama wouldn't have liked me, and, then, and he wouldn't be here. So there we are. Uh, he's a rapper as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he gets busy. He gets busy. Is, he, is he good? Yeah, he's good. Come on, man. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't produce no junk. <laughs> Cube, uh, the movie is called Ride Along. It's out already. It was the number one movie in the States for three weeks. So no, that's got to feel pretty good, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, we're trying to get it number one here, too. Okay, well, let's hope so. It's great fun. Kevin Hart is wonderful. Say hello to him for me. Will um, do. Ice Cube, great to have you here. Mr. Ice Cube, ladies and hey, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you dude. Really good. Yeah. Okay, thanks to all my guests who've uh, chatted to me tonight so far. Next week, I'll be joined by business tycoon and soon to be astronaut, Sir Richard Branson. Singer and Oscar winning actress Jennifer Hudson will be here, and Great British Bake Off star Sue Perkins will also have music from Elbow. But now performing Me and Liza, it is the one and only, the fabulous, with Guy Chambers on guitar, Mr. Rufus Wainwright! <laughs> Famous till the day that we die Mama made it so hard to try Me and Liza, Liza and I Daddy writing unanswered love letters Why? Baby's on fire No one's gonna have to you down Terminator Thief of desire
Jonathan Ross Show is back at the same time next week. And if you enjoyed that, we've even more on ITV Player. Just download the app and watch wherever you like. An internal affairs investigation threatens to drive a wedge between DCI Banks and his team as the case continues Monday night at 9. But stay with us here on ITV. The news is on the way next.